Welcome back to the Pelcast podcast. Myself, David Carabini, Bill Gain, and Jack Cardle, who's running late today due to technical issues. But today we have a very, very special episode with one of the League of Ireland's finest, one of the probably the nicest guys in football as well as uh, Dinny Corker. And Dinny, how are you keeping? Good, thanks. Not a bother. Yourself? I am fantastic. It's great. Now, look, we're, we have you on here. It's it's brilliant. You know, you're a former trotter man. Everybody knows how much I, I love the drug. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great day for me. I mean, I'm looking through your career. You've you've had plenty of success with plenty of clubs and, you know, hitting over 100 goals in the League of Ireland, 118 goals in 365 games across all competitions, playing with Sport and Fingal, Shelburne, Drotta, Bowes, UCD, Sligo, Pats, Wexford, and now mm-hmm. your local club, St. Ethers. Um, you know, what, how... How has football treated you over the last 15, 20 years? Yeah, I'd, I suppose like everyone had, had me ups and downs, you know. I, um, I, I signed for Sport and Fingal when I was, I think it was 18 or 19. I signed a three-year contract with them and thought my life was made then, you know, being a professional footballer was great. And uh, unfortunately, I probably didn't, uh, didn't uh, treat, didn't, uh, how would I say this? I didn't, there was a lot of like, I didn't. Sorry, I'm stumbling my words here now. Um, I kind of took the piss for a few years. Then after that, you know, I probably went out too much and drank too much and didn't look after myself. Basically, what I'm trying to say. So the first few years at Sporting Fingal, I went on loan to Shells. Actually, I don't know okay at Shells. Then, like you would know, draw it in 2011 and um, UCD then and Bowes in 2012. All those years are kind of. I don't really remember them well. You know, I just. I didn't, I thought kind of, ah, getting a few quid for football, it's great, you know, I, I, I kind of didn't didn't train as, as well as I should or look after myself. And then I suppose from then on, 2014 was my first kind of good year. And um, yeah, from then on till I finished, I, I, I had a reasonably good career. I had a few bad injuries now along the way. And 2016 with St. Pat's was kind of a, another year. I'd like to forget, I think I only started two league games. Um. But overall, like you said, I've over 100 goals. I kind of have to be happy enough. But part of me as well is saying I probably should have a lot more. But um, no, overall, I suppose I have to be happy, yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, you mentioned Sporting Fingal got three-year contracts. Obviously, they would have gone out of business shortly after that. Um, You know, they qualified for Europe and went bust. But time at Shells, I mean, I remember the year we draw it back in 2011 under Mick Cook. You know, we were really struggling. Yourself and Tierney Movena effectively kept us up that season, as well as the fact that Galway went bust as well. So it was mm. kind of a challenging time in the league at the, at that stage. And I mean, you went to Bowes the following year, but had the the six months at UCD. And as you're you've said in the past as well about how you didn't really take it serious enough. But it, I mean, that must be the only real regret because you've you've had such a fantastic career. I mean, you're loved by by Bowes, loved by Drogs. I mean, I, I can't imagine there's many people out there that wouldn't look at you and think, you know, you're a fantastic player, a great, you know, after, a, a great, I don't know, I'm stumbling over my words as well here. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, someone who is loved around the league. Is, is, I think you could talk to any League of Ireland fan. I mean, even Jack is a Dundalk fan. I <laughs> don't think he'd hold any ill fate towards you either. So you must have feel some sort of pride in that, the fact that you're seen as one of the really good guys in the league. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's that was always more important for me in general life, you know, to be a, a good person. Forget about the football. I mean, if you look at me now, my football days are over. I'm still the same person. So I always put that before the football to be nice to everyone and stuff like that. And um, uh, yeah, the football was just, I happened to be good at it as well. So um, yeah, the, like you said, the first few years, didn't go my way, but I suppose they were back in whatever, probably 20, 2010 to 2013, 14. So it's quite a long time ago. So I suppose most people are only going to remember the, the latter part of my career, which is which is better. Yeah, you mentioned earlier on that the year with Pats was probably your, your toughest year, but it's the only year you won a, a trophy. You won the EA Sports Cup. Um, I mean, that, that must have been a nice moment even in your career. I mean, for me, watching you as a, as a fan, you deserved so many more trophies. But yeah. It must well, have been nice the, to get I the, that. I won the FAI Cup with Sporting Finger, but yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't really count that myself now because I, I think I only played 20 minutes probably of the whole 
competition. So I know what you mean there. And I won the Leinster Senior Cup with Shells, but you probably don't want to count that either. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like you said, I, I came on in the final of that um, EA Sports Cup of Pats, which was good. Yeah, it was nice. But um, I think at that stage of the season, my head was kind of gone already. I, I wasn't really enjoying my football, so I was kind of kind of bittersweet, you know. I think I think he started me in two league games, which was away to Rovers and away to Cork, who were flying at the time. So two of the probably toughest games you could play, you know. And I don't know. He just he had a strange relationship with me. He didn't really chat to me at all or tell me why I wasn't in the team. And yeah, that that was a really bad year for me. And um, thankfully, Keith Long took a chance on me after that, and I, I, I had two good years in after that. Both, so uh, it didn't didn't complete me really, me, but it nearly did. Yeah, I mean, you you, you had your you know your challenges obviously as a part time player as well. It's it's kind of a, an issue in the league at the moment is the the you know the balance between full time and part time players. I mean, I know some we've eight full time in the in the Premier now two part-time but it's it's kind of a, a challenge in the league overall what would be the biggest challenge that you felt going through your career as a part-time player I know you had the, the year with Sligo where you were full-time as well but yeah um, I, to be honest I don't know I mean I suppose just the, the main difference is kind of just training in the evenings rather than the morning I mean like like draw had an hour them, themselves and UCD are the only part-time teams in the league but I'm sure they train as much as the others you know it's just kind of morning and evening is the, is the main difference which is a, it, it is quite an advantage you know you have a lot of time for the gym and recovery and stuff like that if you're full time and which you don't have if you're part time you could be coming to a match straight from the office at eight or nine hours in the office you know so I mean obviously there there's there's advantages and disadvantages but um, I, I never to be honest I never really worked outside even when I was only part time football it's all I kind of done so um, I, I, I don't really remember it being a, a major issue with me and then, like you said, I had a couple of years full time, which was great because you get up out of bed, you go train, and then you're home at one o'clock, and you have the rest of the, the evening to yourself, you know. But um, no, I never, I never really found it as a major issue to me, you know. Yeah, that's that's interesting to hear. Of course, I mean, you've obviously, I know, you've got, you've got, a, a, is it two kids you have now, and you know, I've three now, yeah, three yeah. now. So it probably would have been helpful for yourself to have have that time where you can go out and pick up the kids from school, or you know go for walks and things like that and just be at home with them it's, I'm sure it's great as a father to be able to say you're around during the day yeah. um, I know a lot of other players would be like for example with Trotter, I know Dale Rooney is a I think he's a carpenter he actually works with one of the lads on my team and then he, mm-hmm. he's so often train three times a week and play a match as well so it's that that could be yeah. fairly difficult for them but I mean what, what would be the struggles you would have seen as a, a senior player even in the dressing room seeing younger players struggling with that side of things to be honest, you wouldn't really, they wouldn't really talk about it much now. But um, like you said, obviously, like your mate there working carpentry is probably quite a strenuous job during the day, you know, and then training and then getting home at whatever nine o'clock or something, get up and do it all over again. I mean, if you compare that to someone off, say Dundalk or Rovers who go train and then go to the gym, probably jump in the jacuzzi for an hour, the ice bath, whatever they want to do, like it. I mean, over the course of a season, that probably would take its toll and. Like I said, that would probably be the the main advantage of of being full time. I mean, training wise, like I said, they probably do train the same amount of nights per week or days, you know. But it's kind of the little things outside that, like you know, minding the kids or having your little downtime. Your man off job probably gets not much of that, you know. So he he's constantly on the go and then plays a match Friday night. So you, it's tough going, yeah. Hit challenges around the time with bows in your your four year spell. You hit a bit of an injury spell there probably after your second successful year with them what were the the challenging sides for a professional player being injured not being able to train your senior team going out and playing what was what was the tough part um, of that how, how did you deal with it yeah that was that was very tough of me and honest I mean um, 2017 and 2018 had been good seasons for me consistently score and playing well probably playing the, the best football in my career and then going into 2019 I started reasonably well again I think we were maybe 12 matches in around that stage and obviously I, I broke my leg then and um, yeah that was very tough I mean for the first six weeks after it happened I was in a boot I had the boot on the leg and I had to sleep in it and I couldn't I, 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 my son was only I think two or three at the time two and a half maybe so I couldn't really do anything with him and it was more kind of uh, mentally draining on me because it was uh, I couldn't do much basically 
and I, and I was at a good part of my career. I was um, and I just turned thirty as well, so I was at a kind of a bad time in 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 that sense as well. And I missed the rest of that year, um, which was tough. And then going into twenty twenty, um, I injured myself. I think it was the first game of the season that I missed, and Andre Wright stepped in and. He basically kept his place then. He had a good, he had a great year, and I couldn't. I struggled to get back in, and obviously that was the, the year of COVID as well. So it was only thinking 18, 18 match season. So I basically missed that whole year as well. So yeah, half of nineteen and twenty was was pretty disappointing through injury, especially after what happened the, the previous two and a half years. But um, yeah, that that these things happen in football. So uh, it was unfortunate, but I was just happy to actually get back from the injury and. Luckily, get get um signed by Drogheda and then Wexford last year. So, yeah, I was just happy to play again because I'd missed it so much over the year and a half. Yeah, I mean, you 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 played in that Drogheda team in twenty twenty one. Um, you know, I mean, for me personally, what a year that was. You know, we I think we ended up with three players going abroad: James mm. Brown, Dan O'Reilly, and and Killian Phillips. Uh, like, what was it like in that side? I know you were more of the elder states, and you were the one of the leaders in the dressing room with the likes of Dane Massey and and um, Gary Deegan, of course. Gary Deegan, yeah. Yeah, so like, what was it like being in that dressing room, young team, hungry, you know, Tim Clancy was struggling at the moment with Pats, but obviously had a great season that year. What, what was that season like for yourself? In the um, yeah, it was a, we had a great dressing room, like you said, we, we Dane Massey and Gary Deegan, Dane has won whatever, eight, five leagues or something, five cups. So we had good experience and, and there was good young players as well, like you said, the, the James Browns and Killian Phillips. I think we kind of overachieved that year. I mean, we we had a good team and like again, going back to the part time and full time, we were only part time. And um I think I think we were very good that year. Tim was Tim was very good that year. I think uh, like I think he's struggling a bit now, Pats. Um I suppose that comes down to pressure, maybe I don't know. But um yeah, um personally it wasn't a great year again for me. I was kind of Again, uh, Chris Lyons was playing and he was doing very, he had a very good season as well. So I was kind of in and out with a few little niggles here and there. So it wasn't the best year personally, but um, yeah, we had a great dressing room and actually we had a decent squad that year as well. And it was enjoyable in that sense. Yeah, but could have went a bit better for me personally. Absolutely. Yeah, Bill, do you want to hop in there? Uh, technology. Yeah, I suppose... Um... Just roll it back a bit. I suppose we, uh, something we haven't touched on uh, yet was you grew up playing GA and soccer at a fairly high level, I believe. Was there um there was talks of you getting caught up for a Dublin trials at one stage? But what I'd like to know is, Joe, there's an awful lot of talk about um I suppose we're talking about the difference between first division and Premier Division teams and full and part time. But from what you saw playing at the top, um, football and say GA. What was the difference in conditioning levels at the top levels of both ends of the sports you know what I mean? So, like, what what the fitness be comparable for your G, your GA players at the top level to where you played, and with say your average League of Ireland player, is there a huge difference or? Um, I think the main difference there is, well, I think GA is very kind of position position specific. You know, the midfielders would need to run a lot more than say the full forwards and wing backs and wing forwards are up and down all day, so. I was a full forward. I never really had to do any of that, but um, yeah, I think I think the GA is more condition based. I'd, I'd, I'd say they do a lot more condition training than than the soccer. The soccer be more kind of technical and tactical, you know. But um, geez, it's gone back so long now. I can't really remember Gaelic. See, I I, I didn't really train with the GA much because I just trained with the football and then I'd play the matches. So it's kind of hard for me to 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 gauge the difference. But um, like like I said, I think mainly is is the GAA is more kind of a lot of it's condition based. You can be an average player, but if you're in serious shape, you can make you a good player. You know that way. So um, yeah. I'd say that'd be my main difference. Yeah. Yeah, just another small point. You, you when you came through with um at Starry Bird, the under twenty one league was um around then, wasn't it? Was, it around. was, yeah, yeah. Like. I, do you think um do you know, I'm looking at the gap between we say under nineteen is now and the senior and there seems to be an awful lot of players being, being lost in the wayside to their falling out of the league system because just the, the jump from we say under nineteens to senior is too big for some just for that end of the career. 
or that at that stage in her career. So like it's something I I, I personally think we should be bringing back. Like I was just wondering, from your perspective as a player, like do did you see um the under twenty one um league or that making a big difference in the players' development as they transitioned into the senior team? Uh, if that makes um, sense. Yeah, no, I I'd probably agree with you. I think I'd like to see the twenty one league back, and um, I know back when I was playing in it, I think it was two or three. You could play two or three over age players, so it was great for say first team players coming back from injury or if they're suspended. And I remember a game in particular we had a uh, Keith Fahey, or was that Pat's with Keith Fahey and Gary O'Neill playing? And I mean, when you see them in the dressing room, you kind of want to impress them, so you're gonna want to play better yourself. So. I think if something like that came back, it, it would benefit the league. Um, like you said, I think the gap between 19 and, and, and senior team is, is big. Some players only kind of <clears throat> develop around the, the early 20s, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah my, my views of it would be uh, I'd like to see it back. And again, with, with, the, with the rule of maybe two or three overage players being allowed to play, yeah. That's fair, yeah. I think that's what to do, do for the 19 players. Isn't it? You're allowed to play like two or three for same players. I think so, but I think, I, they to, I think they have to be born after a certain date as well. I think it's maybe 2000 oh. or something like that. Yeah, as far as I know, I, it could probably, be wrong. But... I, think, I think John Mountley played in Tala last year from the, for the 19th oh. and then he'd come back from an injury. Okay. I could be wrong. But that yeah. might be the friendly, I don't know, of that league. Um, yeah, no, I'm not 100% yeah. sure either. Um, yeah. It could have been a friendly or maybe you maybe can play two or three of any age, yeah. And also that comes down to funding and, you know, where we get the funding for these, um, the league pyramid. And again, that's this question that we've spoken about yeah. an awful lot through the podcast. But look, personally, yeah, I think the, the under-21 league would be a big help to the development of the system. Dave, you want to come yeah. in there? Yeah, I think from my own point of view, I think it would be fantastic. It's something that it's, it's I think it's worked fairly well over in England though I know there's a lot of people that say there's more benefit to playing senior football than there is to playing in the 23s but um, I, I just think as Bill said there's so many players that get lost by the wayside in terms of they'll be they'll be playing in the in the 19s they go up to the seniors and they're just not not physically ready for it no, they're technically ready but they're just not physically enough and they don't get enough protection from from senior players or from referees and things like that. So it's uh, it is something that I think could be could be looked into. But as you say, Bill, funding is is huge, and it's something that is an issue in the league at the moment. As I'm sure everybody knows that mm-hmm. you know we do need to see a lot more money in the league. But it's uh, definitely something that could be beneficial in the long run if we could manage to get that going. Um, but actually, Danny, I just want to ask you something here now, and from from your own point of view, you now you spent. Overall, was it six years with Bose across your career? Five and a half seasons, I think. Five, yeah, five, um, five you could be right. I think it's five and a half. Five, yeah, because you had the six months at UCD as well. So yeah. I mean, yeah. such a great relationship with the club. It's obviously you know a club that's that seems to be on the up under Declan Devine as well. They had a great time under Keith Long before kind of going a bit sour after you left, of course. Um, mm-hmm. with, well, how how would you look back on your career with Bows and say like you look at your your relationship with them with the fans? The fans obviously absolutely adore you. Uh, what would you, what would be your own feelings towards a club like Bohemians? Yeah, a, a special kind of bond there with Bows. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just a real a real homely kind of feeling to the whole club, and obviously it helped that I, I scored a good few goals there and played well. That obviously helps the the relationship with the fans, but. No, they they just talked to me from the start, and and I loved it. And I, it's hard to explain, but there's I just uh I just love going out and playing in Daly Mount on a Friday night and in front of the fans, and even after the game, chatting to the fans and all. They were always just sound to me, and to, to never any problems or trouble with them. And because of that, I just I just kind of fell in love with the club a bit. And there's I know obviously I still know a lot of people within the club and in in the back the back room staff and. It's it's a great club. It's it's fan led and fan run, and, and um, yeah, it's great. Uh, I haven't got back to Daly Mount as much as I'd like to, have, but I definitely plan on going in in the future as, as much as I can. So yeah, I loved my time at Bowes, and um, they'll always have a kind of a special place in my heart, I suppose. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you, you must be one of the very few people that's... Have you scored in, in both the, the Dublin and the, the Loud Derby? Am I right in saying that? I think you've... I have, yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah, you must be one of the few people that has. Like, what, what's that special feeling of scoring, of course? Obviously, Bowes and Grotta being the kind of... Not smaller clubs, but the less mm. followed clubs in, in the two count in the two derbies. Like, what's that feeling of getting a win in those games for for yourself as a player? You know, obviously, the league is known for not many players staying and staying put and things like that, but there's, there's obviously the fans and the go absolutely bonkers for a derby. Obviously, yeah. we... We had the loud derby on Thursday. We're not going to talk about it, Jack. But it's uh, um... yeah, so, like they want it. <laughs> but uh, like it's, I, uh, I went one way. Did be bringing it up? <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, what, what's what's it like as a player playing in those games? As someone who's not necessarily a fan of the club, but you see the the flares, the the atmosphere, the fans going bonkers, and mm. uh, what's it like being the the man to score the goal in those games? Yeah, it's a it's a special feeling. It's it's uh they're the they're the feelings I kinda of miss now when you go into retirement just looking back on them and um yeah, the derby the, the whole week leading up to the derbies were great. I mean there was that extra bit of extra bit of bite and training and obviously social media, you see it all over that, the fans dying for it and all, you know. And um yeah, I was just so lucky to be even be a part of them and then I think I've got I've scored three winners against Rovers and I mean, geez, I just remember going home. Your your Twitter and your Instagram is absolutely hopping, like you know, um, but uh, and we actually won those games as well. So to score and win those games, I mean, you just see the fans reacting all over social media, and you become a hero to them almost. It's crazy, like and then, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a special feeling, and it's that the, they're the ones I miss most. Yeah, yeah, I remember the the penalty or the penalty you scored at Pala. Was it a one 0 win that you ended up getting? Um, was it... I did, in Tala, it was a rebound for a penalty. I actually missed the penalty. I got the rebound. It I, went I think. In, that's yeah, all that matters. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that was one 0 I think they might have got someone sent off. Did I getting confused now with the two of them? But yeah, I think they were all only by one goal. Um, we beat them one 0 in day. They went to score the penalty, and then two one in Tala as well. I got the winner there. So, um, yeah, cracking games. It was. Just great. I remember running over to the fans after you score, and the, the the scenes were just class. Yeah, and then I think the the loud derby was. Did you score in the the two one win when Philly Hand scored the free kick? I think that? I was going to say that. I nearly thought I remember. I, I think I remember. I think you did. In Oil Park, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember the free kick. I can't remember if I got the other goal. Jeez. Um, it was it was either you or Tiernan Movena got it, and then I know you scored in the the home the the, the two all cup draw then. Later on this yeah. season as well, but it's that, that, that's um, the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah you did. You did score the first goal. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez, your yeah. memory's better than mine. I'm bruised. I can't even <laughs> remember that back then. I had to go check. I was young. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's derbies, derbies like that. I mean, they're what make the league so special, I suppose, from from a fan's point of view. But I mean, as yeah. a player, you walk out in the atmosphere. I know, obviously, the the crowds are, are a bit bigger now in the last year or two but it's it's something that you just can't really put your finger on how special it is like I know we got our two wins against Dundalk last season and it was you know the, the best nights you'd, you'd have as a fan kind of thing but yeah. you know it's it, we can only thank the players for, for giving us those nights and then at the same time I'm sure it's it's reciprocated the other way with the atmosphere and the, the players feel towards the fans on the nights as, as well like it's What's the dressing room like after you get those wins? I'm sure, I'm sure it could be absolutely mental. Ah, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's a kind of it's a nice feeling of relief, kind of you know, because the tension the whole week, you know, and it's it's the fixtures you look out for as soon as they come out, and you know it's the same for the fans, you know, and um, yeah, just to, to get a win is great. They're not they're always kind of not the prettiest games, you know. They're quite tense and. They never tend to be great football played in them, but yeah, just once once you hear the final whistle and you've won, it's like it's just a relief. And then obviously, yeah, the dressing room does be does be chaos after, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And then I know obviously you've you've retired from League of Ireland. Um, you had a fairly successful spell with Wexford where you got your hundredth goal uh, mm. in in the league. You've now returned to local local football. You're playing with Saint Ethers. In the AUL Premier Division, and yeah. how's that going for you at the moment? Is part, yeah, it's good. Part, yeah. part, part part time football. Part, part time, yeah. 
No, it's great. It's a uh, standards actually a bit better than what I expected, which which helps. Um, we train five minutes down the road at eight o'clock when the kids are all in bed. So it just it suits me perfect, and um, I'm enjoying that. My brothers on the team, a few pals on the team, and it's it's definitely different. All right, I mean sometimes I do get a bit frustrated because. <laughs> I'm expecting a player to do something a bit better maybe or something I'm not sure but um, no I'm enjoying it it's great I'm, I plan on playing for as long as I can you know so no matter what level it is but I'm enjoying it yeah Brilliant yeah I mean I, I love to hear the, the, the standards marginally better than what you expected because I played the league <laughs> below and, and you know we're, we're literally one league below you and we played just yeah. last season and, and lost 3-1 so it's um, yeah look it's it's great to see. Obviously, Ethos is a, a great club, a great setup down there in, in Ollie Stone and, and then even in, down the hospital as well. Like, and I'm actually reffing a game out in Port Grant on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to that <laughs> as well. But um, I mean, look, you said you want to play for as long as you can. Do you have any coaching aspirations for when that when you do finish up? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Um, at the moment, I haven't really thought about it because obviously I'd probably have to, <clears throat> have to stop playing to, in order to do that and get my badges and stuff it might be down the road though I might think about it yeah I mean my little my little lad's six now and he he loves football so he's he plays every Saturday Sunday so I don't know if I'd have the time for it you know I'm kind of trying to get him to his football is tough enough never mind mine as well but um it could be down the road a bit yeah it could be I haven't really thought about it seriously yet that's that's absolutely fair enough and I mean we couldn't have you on without asking you about March 2020 March 2019 you go on countdown. Nobody knew about it. <laughs> how does that come about? How does it? How does a semi-professional um, footballer get on countdown? Well, it was actually my mom who applied for me. She's a big fan of the show, and I used to watch it when I was younger. I used to watch it with her, you know. And she went and applied for it on my behalf. And I done the the test over the phone, and they were just like, "Yeah, you're you're going to be on the show." And it's crazy. Like I think it was a it was in November in November when I went over and actually filmed it, but it wasn't till February or March when it was actually aired but that was grand yeah I enjoyed it I actually plan on doing that again as well but um, yeah it was crazy uh, and I actually I happened to win the player of the month the same day that the episode was on so I remember that day it was oh, it was hectic my phone was absolutely hopping like more so about the countdown than the player of the month you know but um, that was funny yeah it's different <laughs> Absolutely. No, I don't know if either of the lads want to hop in there for another question before I throw in my last one. Yeah, I saw it all at the dial there on Twitter at the other night. Um, Neil and Reardon had up, as you're popping up every hour, late into it. Like, <laughs> yeah. every time, you show at the minute, like, you're <laughs> That was another one, actually. My missus applied for that, thinking it was the toy show. And she was like, oh, yes, we got tickets to the toy show. And I was like, no, that's that's the Paddy's Day one. So. <laughs> another mishap. But um, ah, that was grand as well, yeah. You can't do nothing. Huh? You can't do nothing without getting noticed now. I know, I know, that's it, yeah. <laughs> hey, Bill, do you have any, any last questions? Yeah, just one. Um, I suppose we were talking about um the amount of goals you scored across your career with over a hundred league round goals, um, scored your hundred for Wexford. But one of the hardest things to do is arguably to put the ball in the net and you've seen an awful lot of these players go abroad and get your chance over England. Was there ever any talks of you getting your your chance across channel? Or was it always League of Ireland? Um no, when I was before my League of Ireland when I was with Belvo, I was what was I, fifteen, sixteen kind of I went over to uh Plymouth and Wrexham and um I, I, after that then since I started League of Ireland, no, not not really. I'd never heard of any interest. I I met a few agents when I was around eighteen, nineteen and started my career, but I never actually signed up to it to an age and so maybe that would have had a bit of an impact I don't know but no it was just the always League of Ireland for me yeah that's fair enough yeah and so did um, we always uh, we always have, did you have another one no go no, uh, did we always have a, one last question for all of our all of our guests I mean for fans like ourselves who, who they've seen but for a player it's your all time five or so of players that you've played <laughs> with now, this might throw you under the bus a bit. There might, might be a couple of uh, upset people now on this, but if you had to okay. pick a five aside, how would you who would you have in there? Um. Okay. Ooh, right. Well, in goals, do I have to put myself in there, or can I just pick five others, or what's the crack? You, we, we go six aside, and you can be in there with, with them. Okay, so five others. Um, I'd put Shane Supple in goals. Um, 
it's up to his class, so hard to score on evening training. and he was he was brilliant. Um I'd have to put Derek Pender at the back, definitely captain. Uh class player as well, smashing player, great captain. Um I'll put <clears throat> Keith Buckley in there as well, in midfield. Uh, very underrated footballer, I think. He's brilliant. He's more known for his kind of work rate and energy, but he's a he's a smashing footballer as well. Keith Ward will have to go in there. Ward, he probably set up about 70% of my goals over my career, so have to put him in there. Um, so what's that? One more. There's one more there. We'll probably one have more. someone to partner you up front. Up front? Oh. It doesn't have to be a striker now. It could be you could go three in the middle with yourself up front. Yeah, I'll have to. The one that springs to mind is uh Johnny Williams. That was back at Sporting Fingal now. He's gone on, he actually played for Drogheda as well. I'm sure you know him. Yeah, yeah, he went on to play for Millwall, MK Dons, and over in England. He was probably the best player I actually played with ever. So, kind of have to throw him in there. So, I'll play a one three one. <laughs> Very good. That's a, that's a solid team to be fair to you now. But um no, look, that's that's all that we have from 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 ourselves. But look, that's absolutely brilliant, Dini. Thanks so much for, for yeah. coming on, giving us your time. It's it's brilliant and it's great to see that you're staying involved staying involved in football from a, a player's point of view and you know, just just keep as you say, just keep being nice to people and, and you know, make it everything everything better around the world, around the place. So well, that that's it, yeah. No, thanks for having me, lads. I enjoyed that. Cheers. Thanks, Camille, Dini. All right, all the best, lads. Take care. Thanks very much.